Have you ever wondered why exactly visitors are coming to your site? What questions do they have when they enter? And what are they hoping to find? Welcome to the channel. My name is Leon. I believe analytics is for everyone working in digital, whether you're a manager, marketer, designer, developer, or whether you're working with content in communications. Analytics can help you improve your decision-making and help you improve the quality of your work. In today's episode of Reporting Recipes, I wanna give you a clear and step-by-step -step process of how to set up internal site search reporting inside GA4. By default, G4 does not have its own separate site search report, but even though there's no report, in most cases, it does track the, the, the search queries that people perform on your site. So we're, we will just need to build a report around the data that's already there. Just to be clear, Today we're gonna to talk about the search functionality that's on your site. So we're not gonna talk about uh, the search queries that people perform outside of your website in search engines like Google. We can make a report about that too. If you want me to make a video about that, please leave a comment down below. So let's go over what we're gonna to build today. So in GA4, there are two options when it comes to building a report. The first option that I wanna go over is an exploration report. And these reports are the quickest way to get the data you want. Exploration reports are perfect if you wanna make a deep dive or make a quick query on the data that's already there. It has some downsides though. You can go back only so far that the data retention setting on your GA4 allows. So on this site, it's 14 months. So we can query 14 months of data. The other uh, downside is, is that uh, its sharing capabilities are a little limited. So the second way to make a report inside of GA4 is inside the reports section of GA4. By default, it has a lifecycle reports and it has user reports, but we can add our own reports to this via the library. And uh, this is perfect if you want to make a report and revisit that from time to time, if you want to go over your entire data set and if you want to share it with others. Why would you want to find out what people search on your site. Well, let's go over some use cases. I've used these reports in the past uh, to find out what people are really looking for on the site. And this is valuable information. For example, if you want to redesign or improve on your current navigation, uh, ex especially in larger organizations um, with many different departments, everybody thinks they should be on the top of the site. So that means that there will be a lot of discussion around who gets to have this spot in the top navigation and who doesn't. And if you want to make decisions about these kinds of things, you want to make them based upon what users are actually looking for and not on who thinks is most important in the company. So by looking at site searches, it's one way to find out what people are looking for and what they are not looking for. It can also help you um, design uh, pages like, for instance, your homepage. Uh, because if people visit your homepage, that those are people that are that uh, come into your site with expectations to to click through. It's also like an important navigation point of your site. So if you want to know what people are looking for, what you what should you put first on the homepage, what what should you put more down below, and what should you leave out? The site search reports are a great way to find out about your user. Another way you can use the site search reports is to find inspiration for content. Uh, for instance, what new content should I write? Um, perhaps people search on a specific subject that you have, haven't written about, so you know uh, where to go first. But it can also help you find out what wording do people use to go into a specific subject. For instance, you might think about the subject and use a different word than is uh, used often in a search engine. And it can help you um, like use the words that people expect in a certain topic. So the third use case of site search reports are actually improving the search functionality on your site itself. If I would be a site owner, I would go over the first 100 most performed search queries on the site and just type them in one by one and analyze are the results actually what uh, we expect or can we improve on the search functionality so people find what they are looking for much faster and especially in e-commerce the site search functionality is an important way for people to actually find the product that they are looking for and it can really help boosting conversion rates. So now that we understand the use cases and now that we understand what we're actually gonna build, let's go over on how to build these reports. So before we're gonna build this report, I wanna go over 
the ingredients, so to speak. What do we need to have in place before we can start cooking, before we start making the report? I wanna preface this section by saying, if you're not comfortable with technical details, uh, or you don't have the rights to do this, please send this section over to somebody who is capable and ha has the experience that uh, they need. Uh, you can watch it or you can skip uh, a, a section in head uh, to build the report yourself. I've made chapter markers, so sh skipping ahead should be very easy. The first thing you want to check in your settings is our search queries actually registered by GA4. We can do that real quick um, by going into engagement and then events. And in this report, you wanna search for view search results. View search results. I see I have 83 events with the names view search results. And this means that uh, search queries are actually measured already by default. So for my site, this is the search functionality that I have on top. And you want to check before we go build the report, we want to check, is it being tracked already or do we need to have some additional setup? If I go into the site uh, and I see the search functionality right here, and if I press, uh, if I type in a keyword and, I, and press enter, I see that actually my search page is not looking very pretty here, right here. Uh, what analytics, what GA4 is looking for is in the URL, a parameter. And that means that in the URL somewhere it should, there should be a question mark. And then somewhere after that, there should be a query parameter. So in this case, it's the letter S. And after that, you will see the word that I just typed in. So if I type in test, the query par parameter will be test there. And if I type in test two, the query parameter will be test two. So J4 will look uh, into the URL to see if there's a parameter with the name S and will use the word after that in the reports. It can also be that the developer of your site has set up the parameter a little bit different. For instance, in Holland, if a developer would use like a Dutch term, for instance, zoek term, or you have it in your own language, this will not be picked up automatically by GA4 and we need to add it in the settings. We can go into our settings and go into data streams. And then usually you have one data stream here. And then in the section enhanced measurement, we go into this configuration screen and here's a list that also contains site search. And when I click advanced settings, there's a list of parameter names that is picked up automatically by GA4. If you have a custom parameter, you just wanna add it here with a comma. So for instance, if I have on my site a custom parameter with the name zoekterm, which is Dutch for search query, I can add it here. And from now on, J4 will automatically track them on my site. So there are other uh, cases where uh, the search functionality doesn't work. So in some cases, the URL does not contain parameters, but it's, it's set up like this, slash search slash, and then the keyword. While the keyword is in there, uh, unfortunately, GA4 cannot pick up the keyword from the URL in this way. So either on the side of the developer or on the side of Google Tag Manager, there's some custom code needed to set up internal site search tracking on this site. So now that we went over the setup and pre preparation for the reports, uh, all our ingredients are ready to go. So let's make some reports. So first I wanna go into GA4 and we go into the exploration reports. Again, this is the quickest way to get uh, the site searches from your data. And we go into a, a blank report and we get, we're gonna give it a name, site search report. We can pick a larger time frame, but we can go back only as far as the uh, data retention setting in J4 allows. On free accounts is maximum of 14 months. Then we're gonna go into uh, metrics and dimensions. First of all, metrics, let's add events. event count. This is the one that I was looking for. Let's add event count. And also let's add active users, which is the total amount of users on your site. And then add a dimension search term. It's under general search term. And then we can import it here and also add event name to this report. I'm gonna explain later why that is necessary. So first, under values, we put event count and active users in, and under rows, we're gonna add in the search term. And if we do that, we should get something like this. We can 
give it a little bit more rows if you want but we get some results right here so we see a lot of keywords that people have filled in on the on the site but on number one there's a, an empty row with a lot of events and active users but it's empty and the question is why is this well we're not only getting the search queries in these reports right now but we're also getting the events that are generated by other events but for for example the page view event or the scroll event or the file download event so we we want to limit this report to only include the search term event or the view search results event and we we can do that by taking the event name dragging it into the filter and say exactly matches and then enter view search results and click apply and there you go site search as an exploration report in GA4 if you want to share this with somebody you can go into the explore overview and then go into share I don't have collaboration uh, access to in, in this uh, report so I cannot do that right now but should, you should be able to share this with other people the reports that they will look at will be read only so if they want to adjust anything for instance the date range or anything else they would need to go in and duplicate the report and from that on point on they can uh, adjust their, their settings let's also go into the reports section and i will show you how you can set up site search reports in the report section of ga4 as well so by default there's only a life cycle and user section but we can add our own additional reports by going into library and the library consists of collections and single reports and a collection means for instance user is a collection and it's it's over here and life cycles also a collection so what i did i already created a collection with the name reporting recipes but you can go ahead and go create a new uh, collection over here I'll give it a name for instance report re reporting recipes and then create a new topic for instance uh, site search and click apply and then from this point on we can um, drag reports into here but we still need to make our own report before we can drag it in here um, so I'm just going to discard this I already made set this up it's right here if you've made a collection the only thing you would need to do is click publish uh, and of course drag the reports in there then you also need to make an actual report and we can do that by creating a new report and then click on create detail report we're just going to go with a blank report and then from here on we can go over these settings so we, we first we're going to go over dimensions and we're going to go add, add the dimension search term and then click apply as metrics we're going to go for event count and users and if we do that we already get some uh, some data and of course I do not have so much data on this site but it will really help uh, as an example anyway we can save this report I will uh, say site search and then click save and it says re report saved in library so now we have a collection we have a report and we need to combine the two together so I go into my collection by, by hitting edit collection and as you can see I made a collection with the name reporting recipes and I already made a topic site search and if I look into site search I have two reports because I made it earlier also I can drop the report into the site search topic and I click save and I will save changes to current selection if I click back we will see that the reports still not there and that's because the report is still on status unpublished so I need to publish it first and after I've published it I will see reporting recipes as a, an, a separate collection and under reporting recipes I have site search here ready to go and uh, I'll just uh, pick last 12 months um, to have a little bit more data to work with again you will see uh, first row is empty because we have selected all events but if I go into here and I say view search results I have only the search events uh, with the accompanying 
uh, search term, event count, and users. So this means that four times people uh, searched for the word hotels, but the, those four queries were actually performed by only two users. So it's, um, it, uh, it will, remo will remove some doubles from the, from the data, which is useful in some cases. So now the report's here, and everybody that has access to GA4 in, on this site will see the site search report over here. So it's a little bit easier if you're working with a, a larger team to share this report. And also you can uh, uh, make use of all di data that's there, not only the last 14 months. So that's it. That's how you add site search reports to GA4. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below the video. Also, if you like it, please leave a thumbs up. It will really help with the YouTube algorithm and get this channel going. Uh, I hope you'll have a great day. Good luck with GA4.